Hey friends, welcome back to the Gubba Homestead. I'm Gubba and today we are in the kitchen. We are going to be processing some pears, some apples. Specifically, we are going to be freeze drying them. I get so many questions about the process of freeze drying. I'm in the middle of apple and pear season. I feel like it is the easiest way to preserve them. So I thought I would show you the whole process. I love freeze drying because it's so low maintenance and the result of freeze dried items, they taste so good, especially fruit. So let's get started. This year, I was so grateful because I was abundantly blessed by my fruit trees. Last year, my fruit trees did not come to fruit. They didn't flower. There was no apples. There was no pears. This was not abnormal for the region around me. It was a low fruit year. My neighbors didn't have their fruit trees bloom or blossom, so it wasn't just me, but in August, I had a apple tree start coming into bloom and I was able to pick in late August and September, which I loved. And then later on, my pears and honey crisp came in as fall really came about. So it was nice to have a supply of fruit, starting with one apple tree, then working into my other apple tree and pear trees. You can see that I love to freeze dry fruit. It is so easy and amazing. I have my trays laid out here, my cutting board, my apple peeler and cutter. The trays, I have these silicone mats on there and that's just for easy cleanup. When you are freeze drying, the juices from whatever you're freeze drying can seep out and the fruit or whatever you are freeze drying leftovers can stick to the tray if you don't use these mats so these make it so nice also a huge shout out to this apple peeler i processed apples without an apple peeler and core like this last year and needless to say it was a huge pain this thing makes it so easy because it peels cores and slices. So all I have to do is just motor that thing about, well, manually motor it about, and then place the apples and pears onto the trays. This was not my first batch of freeze drying of the year. So I decided to really load it up. I had been going light on my batches of freeze drying so far, and I decided to really just layer it up. When you layer up your food like this, whether it's fruit, vegetables, leftovers, it will take longer to freeze dry. So keep that in mind. If I just did a single layer of pears and apples, which I had done previously, the freeze drying process does go by much faster because it has less to freeze dry. Seriously, if you are going to be processing any sorts of fruits like this, or even potatoes, you can put potatoes on this apple peeler and it will slice and dice them just like this and peel them. You definitely want an apple core like this oh this thing was absolutely amazing one of the best homestead tools i added to my kitchen and while i was prepping i went and got the freeze dryer started and ready the freeze dryer has an initial cool down when you start it up and start the process of 15 minutes so i like to time it out i like to get things ready and then when i know i have about 15 minutes left of getting ready i will go and start the freeze dryer so this all you do is press a button you press start then you close the drain valve. If you do not close the drain valve on your freeze dryer, you will have vacuum issues. You need to create a sealed off space in there. Seriously, freeze drying is so easy. I also love this tool. It makes food preservation just flawless and incredibly easy to build up my long-term food storage. So I finished off the trays of my apples and pears and started to load them into the freeze dryer after that 15 minute initial startup interval. And I had leftovers of, well, the apple peels and apple cores. You can do a few things with this. You can make apple peel jelly, apple scrap jelly, or you can make apple cider vinegar. In this case, I was just going to go and give this to my chickens because they love my kitchen scraps. They love the apples and they love to scratch about and then after a few days bugs will come into the scraps out in the chicken run and then they will go and eat the bugs so it's pretty cool and after i got in you know it's kind of a chilly fall day i decided to grab a soup from the freezer it is a soup that i previously made it was a ham potato chowder that i made extra of 
frozen. And then on a day like this, when I don't feel like cooking, I just plop it into the crock pot. And it did take some shaping to fit in there, but it did. And you know what goes great with soup is rolls. So I decided to make some rolls up. What I was so excited about when making these rolls is I was able to use my own honey because I have bees and I was able to gather a large harvest of honey this year. I can start slowly replacing sugar in my recipes for honey. And that is my ultimate goal. So I'm working through my sugar for food storage right now. So my sugar, my granulated sugars, and I would just want to replace it with honey. And then I have my own supply from my bees. I love making breads and all kinds of rolls and croissants because they are so easy. Things like biscuits, bread rolls, bread bowls everything bread is incredibly easy it's fun it's exciting to watch it rise and your kitchen smells so delicious and you get to just experience all these different things when you learn how to make bread i remember when i first started to learn how to make bread and how to use yeast. It seemed a little daunting, but you can see here, I'm just going with the flow. You get used to how the dough should feel, how it should look, and you really become a dough and a bread master. So I spent the time just rolling out these rolls for their second rise. I will have this recipe for you. It's just dinner rolls. They're incredibly easy. Also my bread recipe, my yeast bread recipe, you can take that recipe and you can make bread rolls. You can make dinner rolls. I mean, it is a one-stop fits all bread recipe. So I kind of flop between a few different recipes for when I am making items like this for dinner rolls. And after they had their second rise, which is only uh, 15 minutes to 30 minutes, I decided to put them in the oven so we could get baking. You can see here when I went to go take out these beautiful, amazing buns from the oven, I dropped them. I don't know how that happened. It looks like the tray hit the top and I really fumbled the bread dish here, but you know what? It's okay. <laughs> Things like this happen in the kitchen, especially my kitchen. The next day, the apples and the pears finished freeze drying. And what that looks like is there will be a drying process and it will tell you on the screen that it's drying. And then once they are done drying, that means that your freeze dried goods are ready to come out of the freeze dryer. And you need to be ready for when you take your goods out of the freeze dryer. And you can kind of tell when they're done. You can look in, see if there's any moisture. Most of the times the items will shrink. I know freeze dried candy expands, but you can tell, especially after you use your freeze dryer and you freeze dry the same items over and over again, if your freeze dried items are done. So I got those out. They didn't need any additional time. After my freeze dryer tells me things are done, I still will tack on an additional two to four hours just to ensure that there is no moisture because moisture will ruin your food storage. And I don't want that. I want these apples and pears to last me a long time. And in order to do that, I am going to be using Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers. So what I like to do before I am I'm done freeze drying as I get all my supplies out and I'm ready to go. I also have my vacuum sealer in the back because once you open oxygen absorbers, you need to vacuum seal them back into a bag or they will just continue absorbing oxygen and you essentially just wasted them. I don't want to waste those. They are valuable here on my homestead. So I just spent time filling a Mylar bag. I have two different Mylar bags here. I have the Wallaby Good Mylar bags, which I love because they stand up by themselves and then I have the Harvest Right Mylar bags that came with my freeze dryer and they aren't able to stand up by themselves. So they are kind of a hassle when you are filling them. I also did a few different size of Mylar bags. I did some snack size and then I did some bigger sizes for long-term storage. And it's great to have variety because sometimes you might just want, you know, a little bag of freeze dried apples and pears to snack on instead of opening a big bag. Keep in mind these can most of the time be resealed with a heat sealer so that's great. 
After I had everything in the Mylar bags, I sealed them. You can see me using my straightener, which totally can be used to seal Mylar bags, but you can see that my Harvest Right bag did not seal well with the straightener. The straightener was too hot. So my straightener worked for the Wallaby bags, but the Harvest Right, which is a bit of a thinner material, got melted, which is fine. I have a heat sealer for that, the heat sealer that came with the Harvest Right. But you know what? Sometimes I just like to use my straightener for convenience, but definitely lesson learned here that Harvest Right bags cannot be straightened with a straightener because it is too hot but I love to use straighteners for sealing mylar bags especially when I'm down in my pantry and there's awkward angles and again I just sealed up those oxygen absorbers so I can reuse the ones in the future and that was our day we did some freeze drying we did some homemade ready to eat crock pot meals and made rolls to go and did some mylar bag storage all right, friends, we are now done with our freeze drying. It's been about a day and we just got everything put into our Mylar bags. And what's so crazy is I had that happen with the straightener and I was like, I've never had that happen when I've done Mylar bags. But then I realized Harvest Right, uh, when I got my freeze dryer came with a heat sealer that I always do the Harvest Right bags with. I have never done a Harvest Right bag with a straightener before. And I believe that happened because it is thinner Mylar material, material as opposed to this Wallaby bag. This is really thick. I can do my straightener on it. It's not gonna melt off. So something you learned today. So that's nice. I learned it at least. We got the vacuum sealed oxygen absorbers. And then our apples and pears that just crunch like a chip. So I love this and they taste so good. Like I could just snack on them. And they're so easy to snack on because they're all dehydrated or not dehydrated. Well, yeah, all the moisture has been taken out. So you could eat like five apples <laughs> in the time that you eat one normal one with all the moisture. So you do have to be careful. Thank you so much for coming along on this adventure with me. I hope that you enjoyed it. Freeze drying is absolutely awesome. I hope that you guys got to see how the process goes. It's so easy, so seamless, low maintenance. And thank you for spending your day with me in the kitchen. And I'll see you guys next time. Don't do anything you got one do. Bye.